Hey everybody. Today we're getting started on statistical power. We're going to work through a simple example to introduce that notion, and it's going to avoid some of the clutter that sometimes surrounds this issue. We'll get into some of the dirty details in the next couple of vids. Statistical power is the ability of a hypothesis test to detect a true positive. More specifically, it's the probability of rejecting a null hypothesis when in fact the null hypothesis is false. So that's what you would want to have happen under the circumstances when the null hypothesis is false. Statistical power is concerned with avoiding type 2 errors, or false negatives, in much the same way as statistical significance is concerned with avoiding type 1 errors, or false positives. So they really are two different sides of a, the same coin. So notation. Alpha is the probability of a type 1 error. If you're watching this vid, I'm sure you've seen that before. It is the significance level of the test. Beta is the probability of a type 2 error, and that's what we're going to be more concerned with in this vid. Statistical power of a hypothesis test using this notation is just 1 minus beta. So it's the probability of not having a type 2 error in the circumstance where the null hypothesis is false. Obviously, we would like values closer to 1 in this circumstance. We'd like beta to be a small value if possible. Here's the example we're going to work through. A machine dispenses purified water by the gallon. We're concerned that it might be miscalibrated, and so we fill a 5-gallon jug and precisely measure the amount, x bar, average amount, that we receive. Assuming the amount dispensed is distributed normally, with standard deviation 0.02, we want to test the null hypothesis that the mean fill of the machine is one gallon on average. We're going to have a one-sided alternative and a significance level of alpha equals 0.05. We'll do a one-sided alternative because we're going to be specifically concerned with the possibility that this water machine is not giving us as much water as it advertises. We don't mind if our jug overflows a little bit. Specifically in this um, bid, we want to look at these questions. What's the probability of a type 2 error if, in fact, the machine is giving out 0.95 gallons? So, obviously, less than it should be. And under that same circumstance, what's the statistical power of our test? Ultimately, this is the probability that we want to calculate. The probability of rejecting that null hypothesis that the average fill of the machine is 1 gallon under the specific circumstance that it's actually giving out 0.95 gallons on average. So this is a probability we will be able to calculate. There are going to be two steps to this process. First of all, we need to determine the circumstances under which the null hypothesis would be rejected. To say that a little differently, we're going to compute the critical region, the rejection region for this test. Under the null hypothesis, the um, distribution of the water that it's giving out, the water gallons in air quotes, is going to be normal. That was told to us with mean 1, that's from the, new, from the null hypothesis, and standard deviation 0.02, so variance 0.02 squared. That was also given to us. That's just something we know based on the mechanics of the machine. Samples of size 5, like our jug, um, are going to have means that are also normally distributed, and the center of that distribution is going to be exactly the same as the population distribution, 1, and the standard deviation is going to be less by a factor of um, this 1 over the square root of n. So the standard deviation for x bar is going to be 0.02 divided by the square root of 5, about 0 0.0089. So here's a picture of our rejection region. We're in a normal distribution with mean 1 and standard deviation 0.02 over the square root of 5. We're at significance level 0.05, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis when x bar lies in that gray region there on the left. What we'd like to do is to find the cutoff value, what x bar value um, corresponds to where that gray region starts or stops. We can do this using an inverse normal calculation. For instance, in R, it's a q-norm function. The first value I'm putting in there, 0.05, is the cumulative probability to the left, so the shaded area is 0.05. And then the next two arguments are the mean and standard deviation, 1 and 0.02 over the square root of 5. In this case, we find that the cutoff value for that rejection region is going to be a fill, a mean fill level of 0 .0, rather 0 0.985 to 88. We could have also computed that, for instance, using a standard normal distribution, where the area of 0 0.095 to the left corresponds to a z-score of negative 1.645, and then transformed back from z-scores to this distribution in the usual way.
Now, of course, our goal here was to calculate the probability of rejecting H0 under the circumstance where the true population mean was 0.95. Now we know the circumstances specifically under which the null hypothesis is rejected when we get a sample mean less than 0.985288. So we need to calculate the probability of that happening in the distribution, still normal, with mean 0.95 um, now, because we are specifically assuming that the null hypothesis is false in this way. As before, we still have a standard deviation for the population of 0.02, so a variance of 0.02 squared. And this is just a straightforward normal calculation. If we're using R, for instance, we can do this with the p-norm function. So it's a cumulative probability function. And the probability value, that the value that we're interested in is 0.985288. Again, the mean is 0.95 and the standard deviation is 0.02. And when we do that calculation, we get a probability of 0.96. This is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis under the specific circumstance that the machine is actually giving out 0.95 gallons per, per vend. So that's a specific situation under which the null hypothesis would be false and under which we'd want to reject the null hypothesis. This is the power of the test. It represents that probability that we're correctly identifying a miscalibrated machine that's actually dispensing a mean of 0.95 gallons per vend. The probability of a type 2 error is 1 minus this, so about 4%. So we're happy here because that's a small number, that we're only having type 2 error under the circumstance that the machine's giving out 0.95 gallons on average, 4% of the time. Nice small number. Let's wrap up with um, an important observation and some follow-up questions that we we're going to want to answer in the future. This calculation that we did depended on four really important factors. First of all, the significance level of the test. Secondly, the distribution that we're sampling from. In this case, it was normal with standard deviation that was known to be 0.02. Um, we used both of these things in the first half of our calculation when we were computing the rejection region for our test. The other two pieces of information um, that were important here were the specific alternative value that we were looking at. In this case, it was 0.95 gallons that we were um, using when we were computing our power. Finally, the sample size n. Obviously, that came into play in several occasions here. Now, the first two of these are generally fixed. We are going to pick a significance level at the beginning of the discussion and then leave it alone. Typically 0.05. Sometimes there are other values that are used, but they're always fixed throughout the problem. Secondly was the distribution we're sampling from. We don't have any control over that. In this case, we knew it was normal. We knew the standard deviation. So really, it's the last two that are probably the most interesting here. And there's a pair of questions related to one another, but distinct, that um, all of this raises. First of all, what if we're not just interested in um, a mean fill of 0.95 gallons? What if um, we want to take into account that the um, machine might actually be dispensing 0.9 gallons or 0.96 gallons. How does that result, how does that impact the result that we get? What kind of power level would be predicted under those different circumstances? In other words, what is the power function of this test? Power as a function of that alternative value that we are plugging in. Secondly, for a fixed alternative value like 0.95 in this, in this last example, what sample size should we use if we want to get a predetermined power level? In other words, if we want to have a high probability of detecting, um, of rejecting a null hypothesis that's actually false. If we have an underpowered study, we're going to be unlikely to reject a null hypothesis even if, if it's false, and obviously that's undesirable. So in, this is going to be an important question if we're attempting to design effective studies.